Okay, we're back and we're doing the last video here where we're going to look and see how we can use limits to find derivatives. And the main equation we want to look at is that f, whoops, let me just try that again, f of prime of x. In other words, the derivative of f of x, we now know, is the limit as x, sorry, delta x, approaches zero for the equation of the slope of the secant line. And that would be f of x plus delta x, put all that in brackets, minus, put this in brackets, f of x, all divided by delta x. So it's this equation. This is probably the most important equation we need to know. You better memorize it. You're going to use it a lot. It's definitely going to be in the next test. And you got to make sure you know how to use it. Okay, so here we go. What we're going to do is we're going to look at two different things. We're going to look at the function uh, specifically at x equals 2. And then we're going to say what is the... Uh, and then we're going to try to find the general equation for f of x. In other words, we're going to try to create a function. First time, we're just going to find a number. What is the exact slope at x equals 2? So, before we go any further, let's take a look at the graph itself. Now, if I look at a few points, um, for example, uh, here, this is x squared plus 1. This is f, x squared plus 1. Now, let's look at a few points. Um, for example, this guy. This is a very important point. If I look at this, I can say, well, wait a minute. Um, I can kind of tell what the slope there should be. Like, if I looked at that, doesn't that look like zero? That looks like zero. Uh, now, what about this one? Let's look at this slope. It's a little harder to tell. It's a little harder to tell, but let, let me see. What, what could I say that is? Um, well, it's definitely a positive slope. It's a positive slope. It's, um, let me see, I'm not sure what it is. Uh, I'm going over 1, I'm going up 2, maybe? Kind of looks like that. So I'm going to make a guess. I could be wrong. Up 2, over 1, that means a slope of positive 2, maybe? And let's try negative 1. At x equals negative 1, is it? Well... Let's draw another tangent line. And remember, I'm just doing this by looking at it carefully. Um, it looks like this whole thing is slightly balanced on both sides. So I'm going to say this is definitely pointing down. So I have a negative slope. Uh, and maybe about negative 2. I'm going to say negative 2. And so what is it going to be at 4? I can't actually even see 4. 4 is like... Uh, sorry, not 4. I'm looking for x equals 2. x equals 2 is right here. And that is way up here somewhere. Way up here. I can't even see it. It's it's going to be much bigger than 2. Obviously, the slopes are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Started at 0, goes up to 2. Over here, negative 2. Um, and the question is, is, what kind of shape would it be? So, I'm going to take a guess um, that I've got. Let me see. What is this whole thing going to look like? Um, I'll put it down here. Uh, let me see. So, this would be the f prime of x. Uh, I'm going to have something that is, let me see, it's going to be 0 at 0. It's going to be, let me see, let's draw a few points here. 1 and 1, 2. At x equals 1, it's going to be 2. At x equals negative 1, it's going to be negative 2. And um, I do know that I have a usually a straight line. We're going to see if that actually works out. So, does the curve become a straight line that's going to look like, is this f of um, prime of x? Is this the derivative of this? We're going to find out. And let's try to do it using limits. So the first thing we're going to do is say, well, what do we do if it's exactly at x equals 2? So I've decided which point I'm going to do. So that's my first thing I'm going to do. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, start off with my function. Okay, so the... Um, I should be careful about this. Um, this equation is slightly wrong. This equation is slightly wrong because I don't know what x I'm going to use. So let's just say that for doing this, 
I actually have to choose um, some sort of uh, x. I've got to choose what x I'm going to use. So we'll just say that's a f of c. Um, that's, that's kind of what I'm talking about here. This is a more appropriate uh, version of the equation. So now I'm going to consider, let's consider, consider f of x equals x squared plus 1. And I'm going to choose um, and let c equal 2. Okay, so let's see what happens. That means uh, my slope at that point will be equal to the limit as delta x approaches 0. Don't, don't forget that. Oh, now, what's the first one? Well, if I plug in c plus delta x into my equation, so that means instead of x, um, I've got c plus delta x. That means this is going to be, let me see, c plus delta x squared plus 1. All right, so let's see what I did. Um, I've now placed c plus delta x. That is now replacing my x of my function. That is my, I guess, well, this part. And then I'm going to be subtracting f of c. And that is going to be, uh, instead of x, I'm saying c squared plus 1. And then it's all divided by delta x. Now, now that I've uh, replaced it with, okay, so let me see. Now I'm going to take this whole thing. Let me just I'm going to copy and paste because I am lazy. There we go. Bring it back down. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace. I'm going to replace a little part. Uh, instead of C, I now know what C is. So let's take the C's away, and we're going to replace them with C equals 2. So that means this is a 2, and this is a 2. All right. Now what I do? Well, i got to multiply it. i got to multiply everything. I, I don't know what all this is. So let me see. That will be equal to... So let me get these equal signs out of here. Limit as delta x approaches 0. Now, let's see. 2 plus delta x squared. What do I got? Well, that's a binomial. So what am I going to have? I'm going to have 4 plus delta x times 2 plus delta x times 2. So that's going to be plus 4 delta x plus delta x squared plus, and then I got the 1 on the outside, 1. Okay, then I'm subtracting this. What am I going to subtract? I'm going to subtract uh, 2 squared plus 1. Okay, so that's 4 plus 1, 5, so I'm going to be subtracting 5. All right, and still dividing everything by delta x. Can I simplify this at all? Sure I can. Of course I can. That's going to be the limit as delta x approaches 0 up. Let me see. 4 plus 1 minus 5. Okay, they're all gone. So that'll be 4 delta x plus delta x squared all over delta x. Aha! Uh -huh. That is equal to the limit as delta x approaches 0 up. Let me see. I can divide both by delta x. I'm going to be left with 4 plus delta x x. So what's that equal to? Well, if that's going to approach 0, then all I'm going to be left with is 4. So I'm saying right now that the slope, this is the slope of x squared plus 1, uh, or y equals x squared plus 1, at x equals 2. That's my answer. That's my answer. Now, that's not a function. That's not a function. I'm only, in this case, finding the slope at one point. Now, that's not the only thing I'm interested in. What I want to do now is I want to just consider, can I find a general equation? A general equation so I can plot the slopes at all points. Well, how would I do that? Well, let's take some of this away. Try it again. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm still doing the limit of f of, now, c plus delta x, oops, minus f of x, 
all over Delta X. I'm still doing that. Oh, by the way, not F of X, sorry, 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 F of C. But in this case now, I'm going to let C equal X. In other words, I don't know. I have no idea what my C is going to be. I'm going to let it be all X's. Can I get, um, can I get a function? Does, okay, and this will work if the function exists, of course. So let's try to do it. Let me see the limit as X approaches zero of, now, that's F of, that's F of X plus delta X minus F of X all over delta X. And, uh, by the way, f of x, just remember, is equal to x squared plus 1. So, what do I got? I'm going to have the limit as x approaches 0. I shouldn't put these equal signs down here, should I? f of x plus, okay, let me see. Once again, this looks very familiar, but it's going to be x plus delta x squared plus 1. That's, one, that's the first part minus x squared plus 1. All divided by delta x. Okay, what do I got? Let's multiply it. Let's do it all. Limit as x approaches 0 of... Okay, what do I got? I'm going to have x... What do I got? x squared. Okay. Plus... You see, so that's delta x times x plus delta x. Okay, so that's 2 x delta uh, that's kind of ugly oh that doesn't hurt. there's someone beeping their horn like a madman outside oh my god okay delta x squared and then plus one okay so that's the first part all multiplied out i can't really do anything with that that's horrible and then over here i've got minus x squared minus one okay it's minus one because i'm taking the brackets off here and all of it divided by delta x Whew. Okay, what do I got? Limit as x approaches 0. What's going to happen? Oh, my x squareds cancel. Okay, I'm going to have a 2x delta x plus x delta x squared plus 1 minus... Oh, that's gone too. So I've got a few things. So what's happened is that this is canceled, and this is canceled, and now I don't have very much left at all. Okay, and then I got delta x. So that's the same as saying limit as x approaches 0 of 2x delta x divided by delta x plus delta x squared over delta x. And that is equal to the limit. I keep saying x, don't I? I've said this the wrong way. Okay, sorry guys, made a mistake. This is not as x approaches 0, it's as delta x approaches 0, isn't it? I, I said that totally wrong. I hope you caught that before I did. Okay, so what do I got again? I got some more cancelings. I got these cancel, these cancel. I'm going to be left with a delta x there. So what do I got? Look at that. 2x plus delta x. And as delta x, I'm going to be left with a function. 2x. 2x. That looks a little simple. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Let me uh, let me grab foo plot. Okay, so here's our function, and now I'm going to plug in two x. See what it looks like. Oh, look at that. So let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more, so you can see that even clearer. What do we have happening? Well, this is actually pretty almost identical to what we said would happen. First off, look at that. Look at that. At x equals 2, let's zoom in a little bit, at x equals 2, my slope on the red line, remember, I'm just looking at the red line, that's the map of the slopes. I've got at x equals 2, I have a slope of 4. At x equals 1, I have a slope of, oh, I was right, I got a slope of 2. At x equals 0, I got 0, and you can see, look, I'm going into the negative direction, because these slopes on this side are all pointing down, they're all negative. So as you can see, I am increasing my slopes at a linear rate. So a quadratic has turned into a, the derivative function of a quadratic has turned into a linear 
function. Take a look at that for a while. See if you can understand what we're looking at. So remember, uh, even if I had made this as a line, I said, okay, this is the, um, instead of saying it's a quadratic of x squared plus 1, this is actually um, a, 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 a position time graph. If it's a position time graph, then I'm looking at velocities. And so if you made a velocity time graph, it would be the red line. And this would show you how you are changing your speed. But what is speed or velocity in this case? It is the rate of change. It's the rate of change of the function. So what is this thing change? If you think about it, you would almost say, okay, well, if I was looking at this as a position time graph, the steeper slope would mean the steeper, the, the larger velocity. So what is the velocity if, if it's zero? It should be, well, my velocity is zero if my slope is zero. And you can tell, like right here, I would have a velocity of zero. Let's zoom in here. It's getting closer. My velocity would be zero right at x equals zero. And there I have it. My rate of change is what I'm talking about. And, and this is an important thing for everyone to realize, is that I talk a lot about position time graphs and velocity time graphs. But essentially, the thing is, is that what you're looking to do is figure out the rate of change. That's all velocity is. The rate of change of position. That's all velocity is. And, but it doesn't have to be in math. It doesn't have to be position and velocity. It could be something else. I could have things changing in different ways. I could have money changing. Uh, this would not be the same as looking at uh, someone running down a hill, but the math would be the same. So, what do we want to get back from this? Okay, so just remember, all we're doing is we're using this first equation, using limits to figure out some way of calculating the function that gives us the slopes. And that function is known as the derivative. Okay, so, if you want to have a little practice, um, I'm going to give you a few things that you can look at uh, that will give you enough practice so that by the time you're doing the test, when you come back, you'll be ready for it. So here's what I want you to do. First, uh, go on food plot. Go on food plot. And I want you to graph uh, this function. I want you to graph f of x is going to be equal to, or, or y is equal to, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter going to be equal to x cubed plus x squared plus x plus 1. And I want you to find the slope at x equals 3. Try that out. So first, first, I want you to uh, plot it on true plot. Plot it. And guess some slopes. Some of the slopes uh, it should be kind of uh, noticeable. Maybe you can uh, check it out. Guess some slopes. See if you can find some special slopes. Um, so your um, guess and then uh, uh, not guess but draw draw I want you to do this before you do any math okay so what I want you to do this is really good practice is uh, make a sketch Make a sketch of what of what you think what you think uh, f of x f prime of x in other words the derivative function make, make a sketch of what you think the derivative function will look like what will it look like right and then using your formula, find the slope, find slope at x equals 3, and then see if you can't use the formula to find the entire function. Okay, I want you to do both. I want you to do both because those kind of questions are what I'm going to ask you on the test. 
Now, when you're done that, that's just that's a pretty simple little thing, but you have a very long holiday, so you have a little bit of time on your hands. I've got this last thing I want you to do. Okay, so I want you to read, read pages 104 to 110, six pages. Uh, it will cover everything I've talked about already. It will tell it to you slightly differently, but you'll notice that the equation uh, that we're interested in is on page 107. So make sure you understand everything leading up to that so that it's very clear what you have to do. Then you can do questions. Now, I'm not assigning this. This is not homework. But, of course, if you want to be ready for the test, please do those questions starting on page uh, 110. Do as many as you can. Uh, it's section 2.1, in case you're not sure, in the textbook. And all those should help you. And that's as far as we're going to go. That's as far as the midterm is going to be. And as long as you can do this basic stuff of using limits to find the derivatives for either one point, in other words, the slope at one point, or you can use the equation to find the entire function of the derivative, then you should be fine for the test. And of course, remember that this test will also have everything we've already done, mostly focusing on limits. Okay, and then I will see you after vacation. Hope you're having fun. See ya!